Uh, my name is Martin Blake. I'm the head chef here at the Manor House Hotel in Castle Coombe, um, and I work under executive head chef Rob Potter. Uh, we look after the Mission Star restaurant in the Bybrook, and we have three rosettes as well. The dish I'm going to do today is um, a pan roasted Cornish brill. We're going to serve that with um, a set fondue, a hazelnut pesto, roasted chervil root, and I'm going to finish it with chicken jus. Um, this is a really nice autumn dish that's just gone lodged in the Bybrook re uh, Bi restaurant. Um, so that's why we've chosen it. It's got lovely, rich, heavy flavours that um, complement the weather outside. Um, and it's a really pretty dish as well, so I'm looking forward to doing it. The brill that we use, the Cornish brill, we use a company called Flying Fish. They are probably the best there is. Uh, Johnny's amazing. The, the fish that we get is always 10 out of 10. Um, so we use that. It's also a really nice fish to use because similar to halibut and turbot, it's quite meaty. Um, so it's, it's really nice for this time of year. You can really roast the fish like that. Um, we're also using seps, which are in season now, um, quite local to us. Um, I'm going to finish the hazelnut pesto with um, a Wiltshire truffle, so it's an autumn truffle. Um, and again, chervil roots in season, uh, and the dish will be finished off with a roasted chicken sauce. So that's going to bring um, a real heaviness to the dish that it needs, and it's going to balance really well with the fish. We'll get the fish in. The fish comes from flying fish, as I say, it comes in um, fresh. So we'll take in the whole fish, we'll take off the skin, take off the bone, skin it, trim it down, and then to order we fill it into portions. And the reason we do it um, fresh into order is to keep the shape. Um, we always get fresh fish in, so we're not freezing. When you freeze fish, when you cook them, they tend to, the proteins tend to leak out, so everything's fresh, everything's um, as clean as it can be. We're making the, the chicken jus. So we're gonna chop down the chicken, the chicken wings, nice and small, we're gonna cover them with oil, uh, veg oil, and roast them through the oven. We're going to roast them for about 45 to 50 minutes at 180. Um, we want to get a really nice caramelization on the wings. This will give the, the sauce a really rich flavor. If you weren't to caramelize them or roast them off, your, your sauce would lack any flavor. It'd be very weak. So we're going to roast off the wings. And then we're going to, whilst they're roasting in a pan, we're going to chop mirepoix, so carrot, leek, um, celery, onion, garlic. Roast that off in a little bit of oil. Again, a nice bit of color. The reason that you want to get color on it is because you're trying to give the, the sauce more flavor. Again, roasting it is going to bring flavor to the, the sauce. Once the, the, the veg is roasted, we'll add some Madeira and some white wine. We'll bring that down to a glaze so it's nice and sweet. We'll then add the chicken wings that are already roasted and the tray that the chicken wings were cooked on. We'll add chicken stock and we'll deglaze them so that all that lovely flavor from the chicken wings comes off and it's in the sauce. So we're not losing any flavor. Once the wings are in, we'll add chicken stock a little bit of veal stock for colour and body and then we'll let it tick away for probably two hours nice and slow skimming it to remove any scum or any sediment from the top and again once that's once that's finished just before service what we'll do is we'll bring it down finish it with a bit of butter so it's rich and thick and that's the sauce done. I'm going to make a hazelnut pesto um, you can also use cob nuts that we we do have in the grounds I haven't got any today but we'll, so we'll do it with the hazelnuts so what we're going to do is we're going to roast the hazelnuts through the oven 180 for about 10 to 15 minutes just so they're nice and uh, golden. We're then going to leave them to cool and then we're going to crush them with a rolling, rolling pin. If you don't leave them to cool and you try and crush them, um, they'll smush, they won't break up nicely and you're not going to get that texture in the, in the pesto that you want, a bit of crunch. So once the hazelnuts are cooled, we're going to grate um, 36 month old Parmesan cheese into it, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and hazelnut oil that we get in. Um, and then I'll probably finish the pesto with a little bit of the Wiltshire truffle that we talked about earlier on, um, and a bit of rock salt. So it's got, again, it's got a bit of crunch. Um, so when we're doing this during service, we do this before service because uh, we want the nuts to stay crispy. If you were to make it and try and use it three days later, the nuts would go soft and it would you'd have no texture to the dish. This is the reason we're using the pesto is just for a little bit of texture and richness from the Parmesan cheese. Cornish broke, so fillet, it's already filleted. We're going to place it on a blue cloth, skin side down. It's been skinned, but we call it skin side down because that's the presentation side of the fish. You've got the lovely lines that you'll see. Um, the reason we put it on the cloth is so it dries it out. So when you go to colour it, it doesn't leak out of water and doesn't boil or poach. So straight into a pan of semi-hot oil. So you start to fry it, you're not gonna, you don't want to char it or you don't want to cinder it or burn it. So you want to start to caramelise it nice and slow. Once you've got a bit of colour on it, 
if the fish is thick, you want to put it in the oven for a minute just so you can get some heat into the center. The fish that we're using today is quite a small fish, so it's going to be cooked straight through in the pan, roasted in the pan. Once uh, I'm happy that the, the skin side is nice and colored, I'm going to chuck in a knob of butter, pull off the heat, and just let the roasted butter start to noisette, so start to, to turn brown and nutty. And then it's just going to gently tick over and finish the fish. Just before I send it, a little bit of lemon juice, and that's as simple as that. The plate in. I'm going to start off by um, putting the set fondue on the, onto the plate. This will be what I rest the fish on. The fish will sit on top, uh, and then all the juices from the fish and the pesto will drip through onto that, and it'll be lovely. The butter. Um, we're then going to roast some chervil root. That'll go on the side of the fish. A little rocher of celeriac puree and some chervil crisps, and then again, this will be finished with a little bit of roasted chicken sauce. So um, when I left school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I studied art and design and media and general studies at A level, and um, I didn't really, I didn't really know how to pursue that. And at the, at the time, I was part time working in, um, I'd say like a fast food restaurant as such. But I loved cooking, um, so I decided that once I've done my A levels, I'll keep them cause just in case I need them when the, cook, the cooking doesn't work out, and I'll go on and pursue cooking. So I left, um, left college, finished college, went to a place called Bowood in Derry Hill. I worked there for a few years, so I started off as like a demi chef to party, working in the brasserie, making sandwiches, and then moved my way up into like the conference of banqueting, so learning a bit more about numbers. And finally, I managed to get into the Shelburne restaurant, which had two rosettes at a time. So that was the start of my catering career. This is where I also did my MVQ, so I did like a workplace apprenticeship. Sorry, um, I moved on from Bowood and went to Homewood Park, which had three rosettes at a time. This for me was like. A, a step in the right direction to where I wanted to be. Worked there for a while, uh, and then I realised I wanted to get into the Michelin star kitchen. So I went to the Bath Priory, worked under Sam Moody, who had a Michelin star, and it was um, it was a proper eye opener. I loved it. Loved every minute of it. It was hard work. Um, so I grafted there for a little while. Um, a friend of mine then took over Homewood Park as head chef and called me in to take over as sous chef. So I did that. I went back as sous chef for a couple of years. Um, and I, found, I think I just felt that I hadn't learned enough in you know, top kitchens. I wanted to push myself even more. So I went back to the manor where I am now, five years ago, and worked under Richard Davies, um, who had Mission Star. Uh, we worked under him for a while as his junior suit. Um, in 2015, 2016, I think it was, Rob Potter took over the manor house. He was from Lutton Park. He came around as ex exec chef here. And the rest is history, really. We retained the Mission Star in the first year. We retained three rosettes, um, really good score in the uh, Good Food Guide, and we've just been pushing on since then. So I say I developed from junior suit to senior suit with Rob, and then about a year and a half, two years ago, he promoted me to head chef, and I look after the private restaurant for him and the hotel as well. But. So this is where we are. A couple of chefs that have influenced me, um, Gary Jones, a really massive one. I'm, I've never actually worked with him, but. Um, he, he's judged a few competitions I've done. I've met him a few times. I've done stages at Le Manoir, um, and I think he's a really clever chef. Um, also, he's sort of from near where I'm from, Bradford Avon area. So, uh, yeah, I've always thought he was an amazing chef. And going onto the Manoir, the things he do, does there is amazing, inspirational. Um, chefs like Paul Ainsworth, not just because of his food, but he seems to have a nice attitude in the kitchen. You know, he's not doesn't seem to be one of these chefs that. Wants to pick on people and bully people, which I think he's quite nurturing, which I think the, the industry needs. Um, and then a few other chefs I've worked with that people probably wouldn't have heard of as well. Um, I worked with a chef called Wojciech Nawalka for years. Um, he didn't win a Michelin star or anything, but he was just a very good chef, very friendly, helped me through progressing from a young chef to, to where I am now. You know, and so I don't think it's always the Michelin star chefs that push you along, but, uh, and Rob Potter, to be fair, I had to put his name in there now. He's Five years, he's, I've worked with him and he's been great. Like he's pushed me and pushed me and pushed me and trusted me to, to run his restaurants. And, and I, I think I owe a lot to him, so yeah. So you would have been given um, a recipe card for the dish I'm doing today uh, for the hazelnut pesto and the chicken sauce will be on there. Uh, I'm looking forward to coming into the college when all these restrictions are lifted and seeing how you're getting on with them.